YouTube, we're back. The originals, the double L's, the living legend, Larry, your boy, Lamont Tyson. We are back tonight to give you our Friday show, preview what's coming up, recap some things, and talk about some other stories that's in the news. Living legend, how you feeling, my brother? I'm feeling pretty good, man. I feel like, you know, like the, the, whole, the whole original Avengers thing, I feel like we might have to be the Eternals. I feel like everybody else is, uh, you know, built them up. I feel like we might have to be the Eternals now. <laughs> man, I, I, if I had to pick one, I'm still going to be an Avenger, man. I'm still I'm sticking you. with the Avengers. You know how we get down with them. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I, for some reason, am having trouble with IG. So B. Avery, if you're within the sound of my voice, check your email. Send that link to one take big dog or have one take big dog email me at get a life his email because i don't have it so my man can get up here when we get to the segment on peacemaker but larry peacemaker. i just gotta ask you living legend living <laughs> legend larry i gotta ask you i just gotta ask you how did you enjoy power last sunday i enjoy i enjoyed the last suffer s-u-f-f-e-r <laughs> <laughs> the the only thing I didn't like, Larry, I think I gotta come to my senses. I think my TV wife is dead, man. <laughs> I that... broke up with her. I think she's dead, man. They in the trailer this week they had a clip of her, but everybody keeps saying it's just Tariq spazzing out like his daddy. Larry, I think I was a little hasty. And breaking up with her, <laughs> and now she's gone for good. But tell me how you felt about last week, Larry, before we start previewing episode nine. Man, I, I'll be honest with you, man. I had some real issues about about that. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Like it just some of it just didn't make sense. Like I'm trying to suspend my disbelief, but some of it just didn't make sense. And I'm like, come on, Courtney, that's what that's what you want us to that's what you want us to believe. So what, what 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 you didn't like, man? Tell us what you didn't like. Break it down from what did you not like? I got I gotta know. Gotta know. So so we're supposed to believe mm -hmm. that 50 year old, 50 plus year old Mary J. Blige rolls up over there with her high heels on and her and her and her fancy clothes, and she's supposed to somehow. She's supposed to somehow overpower Carrie enough that she can lynch her and make it look like a suicide. Hey, man, you don't know that that's what happened. You don't I know mean, that's what happened. Why? Why else would she? Why else would she hang her? Why else would she? That's the only reason I could think of why you would hang someone in that situation is if you're trying to make it look like a suicide. Otherwise. Why wouldn't you just go in there and shoot her and be done? You how know? Do you not know, how do you not know that she told her to hang herself or she was going to wind up killing her? So you think that so you think that she decided to go and hang herself? If someone said, if you don't hang yourself, I'm going to shoot you, I would tell them, well, I guess you're going to have to shoot me then. I'm not going to do your job for you. I mean, that doesn't well, make any sense. Do, do I need to give you a real-life example of what you're talking about? Do it. Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. Jeffrey, okay. Epstein didn't, Jeffrey Epstein didn't hang himself. He was straight marked. They killed him in no, his no, cell. No, no. They, I no. mean, when you talk no, about no, they, no, they no, talked no, about no. how his, that no. he was supposed to have been no. under 24-hour guard, and then all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, he the guard that was, was supposed to be. He was hung, he was hung. He hung himself because he had an ultimatum. Either nah. we're gonna we're gonna kill you, or you're gonna have to hang yourself. Take your pick. Nah. He took the pick of hanging himself. Nah, they happened. killed him. They killed him. But they, I mean, they even said the guards that were supposed to be watching him, mm -hmm. all of a sudden they were just not there. The, the the cameras weren't on him, the guards weren't there. All of a sudden, every security measure just went wrong, just went blank at the wrong time. Nah, they didn't. He and they said there was, and they said that there were that there were signs of struggle on the body, which tells me somebody came in there and whooped his ass and hung him. And so, I mean, no, nah, I don't think I don't think he. Uh, 
I don't think he did. I don't think he hung himself. So mm -hmm. just like I don't understand this whole thing about I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, we're supposed to unless unless somehow I don't know how she would have convinced her to hang Carrie to hang herself. It doesn't make sense to me that we would think, first of all, because we know how he how heavy a body is. So if somehow she was able to get her unconscious, get if 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 Monet was somehow able to get Carrie unconscious in such a manner that she didn't leave any wounds or bruises on her body, so it would still look like a suicide. Anybody who's tried to carry an unconscious person knows how heavy dead weight is. I mean, that that hundred and whatever she probably weighs, 125 pounds will feel like it's 200 pounds because it's just awkward, heavy, dead weight. It's not like lifting 125 pounds on a barbell, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's nice, stiff, even balanced weight. That 125 pounds of, of a human being? Nah, there's no way that there's no way Monet was able to lift her up and 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 get her on get her up on a rope somewhere and hang herself. And it, nah, I, I can I can disprove that too. Did you see the way Monet grabbed her daughter, who probably weighs about the same amount as Carrie, and put her hands around her neck and lifted her ass up on the wall? You she bitch! Did. You bitch. have you ever tried to lift somebody up off the ground by their neck? Yes. And you know how much energy and how much strength it takes. Diana probably only weighs about 100 pounds. There's no way that Monet, and I'm not, I don't want to say, I'm not dissing her saying she's old, old, but she's not young. She's 50, she's like 50 years old. There's no way in Sam Hillbilly that okay, she is well, up there. Well, let me give you a better theory then. Because they didn't show what happened. How do you know it wasn't detected waiting to exhale that slipped into the house and did it? I mean, it's possible. It's possible somebody could have came in after there. It could. It's possible that 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 Monet had somebody working with her and came in and did that. But still, it, you yeah. it still comes down to this whole thing that if you're gonna have someone hanging and make it look like it's a suicide, mm -hmm. the only way you do that is if you can get that person unconscious without physically hurting them because as soon as you put any sort of any sort of signs of struggle on them you know some hands around the neck bruising punching anything like that it's clear it's not a suicide it's clear that it was a homicide so it just it seems to me like they went through some effort to make it look like she killed herself and if that's the mm -hmm. case i want to know how in the hell it happened because monet's not strong enough to do it I don't know most men that are strong enough to, to do that by themselves. Uh, I know plenty of dudes who could do that by themselves. I just interviewed one Tuesday. Yeah. No, I mean, that's he's not most men. That's the thing. If you're talking about if you're talking about fitness junk, I can tell you right now, if I go and walk down the hall and grab any one of my neighbors, any male that's down the hall or mm -hmm. on this block, any of them, they're not going to be strong enough to go and just pick up dead weight by themselves, hoist them up, put them on a, put them on a, a, a on, on a, on a rope and make them seem like they've hung themselves. It's just that, that, that part to me, that part to me really sort of spoiled the episode for me a bit because I was expecting like some big dramatic death. And instead I got this sort of, I don't believe that like just the logistics of it didn't make sense to me. And maybe I'm overthinking yeah. it. Maybe I have to suspend yeah. my disbelief a yeah, little bit Yeah, you got to suspend it, man. They want us to think that Monet probably gave her the ultimatum. Either I'm going to mutilate you or you hang yourself. Or Detective Whitman, who is in good shape. Him and, him and Cooper Sacks in good shape. One of the, um, Detective Whitman slipped in there and took her ass out. But I'm but sure we're going to find out. What motivation would he have to do that? He hated her. He hated her. He just hated her. He hated yeah. however she treated him. She hated however he treated her, him, during the Jabari era. And you see throughout the whole thing, he just had pure animosity for her, so much so that on a first date, instead of taking that beautiful, sensual, sweet flower and put it in a vase, he took her ass to the morgue. That's what he did. You don't put a woman like that in the more you put a woman like that in a vase and you water her ass and you let her continue to sprout. That's what uh, you do. I, I, look, there might be, 
there might be some some sour feelings there, but I don't think it rises to the level of murder. I just okay. don't think okay. I don't think that rises to the like I have some sour feelings towards some people that I've used to know. Mm-hmm. I don't I can tell you definitively, I don't I don't feel so sour towards anybody on this planet that I would want to take their life. And and I don't see what his motivation would be anyway. It's just, I mean, okay, if he was going to kill her because he was upset about the way that she treated him, he could have long done that. He could have been done that a long time ago. He didn't need to wait till now. Maybe he wanted to dig the knife in. Maybe he wanted to see her struggle a little bit. But <laughs> they did say, they did Hold say, on, we're going to get. You're reaching. <laughs> hey. <laughs> it ain't it ain't no different from the reaching you be doing with Ramona. That's why she's her name is Ramona. Ramona Reach. Ramona's, Ramona's gonna be, Reach. Ramona's go, Ramona's coming back. Man, I I just don't want to give up on this woman. That's all it is, man. But I'm gonna have to. I believe she's dead. But I'm glad to hear that you enjoy most of itself for that part. Now they we don't know giving... though because because Zeke showed up like not long after so there's a possibility that if you know that if she didn't have her neck snapped there's a possibility she still could be alive so pete man the people is telling me to just give up larry and i'm about to side. i'm about to side with the people man i'm gonna give up i'm about to i don't know man you gave up on her once you know sometimes you gotta put it in sometimes you got you gotta have some stick to itness bro her problem her problem (laughs) the whole time is that she didn't want to give too much loving for us short short men like short man Tate, us five eight brothers. She's just doing us dirty, man. So that's well, Jabari what wasn't so Jabari wasn't tall. He was taller than five foot eight. You think so? Because he was barely taller than Tariq, right? Yeah, he's he taller than five eight, man. I mean, short man Tariq's Tate only, what, is like five, five seven. No, Tariq five ten. He's five ten. Five ten. Tate. Short man Tate is five foot six. Oh, I didn't think Tariq was that tall. Five ten ain't. I mean, who says that's tall? <laughs> well, I, mean, I said my cutoff line was her cutoff line was five eight and under. That was that's what her cutoff line was. And this is what she get, Larry. This is exactly <laughs> what she get. So I'm I'm through with her officially. Let's let's preview what's gonna happen this week, Larry. They done dumped um like four to five different trailers, and I've been all over the coverage. So let's just go through the, the, the whole trailer first, and then we'll go through the ones that they dropped tonight. So let's just kind of preview what's going to happen, get your predictions. Here we go. What does Rashad Tate know about you that I don't? He's our next witness. Sorry about Professor Moogham and anything. You don't actually think through anything. I need hard evidence against Tariq St. Patrick, and I need it now. Can you understand how much is at stake? It's not always about you. I gave you a gun. Use it. Get revenge. He won't rest until he takes everything away from you. Strap up. We're headed out. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Looks like a lot of violence is coming week. Oh, boy. So how do you think Mef McClain is going to behave once he finds out what... (laughs) Short man Tate got on Tariq. What do you think he's going to He's going to be willing to help? How do you think he's going to react? Oh, man. that That's um that's tough because you have two sort of like uh, – you have two powerhouses in a lot of ways. Both of these dudes are powerful men just in a different way but in their own right. And Yes. Yeah. You know, and so – Neither one of them like him being challenged. And I think, you know, it's one thing. It's a little different with Meth McClain because obviously he's being paid to, to do a job, whereas whereas Tate's just sort of in the game because he's trying to get back, get his career back lined up. So, um, mm-hmm. man, I don't know. That's that's hard. It's just I, 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 feel, <laughs> I feel like they must really be frustrated when they're all running around, realize they're getting played by like a 19-year-old. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's how you feel about that. Um, I think that Mef McClain is going to find out the truth and he's just going to be willing to work backdoor deals with Tate because Tate, he's a chameleon. He knows how to blend in and we know he's going to influence and he's going to have his own show. He's probably going to get that representative seat. I hope so. And yeah. I can't wait for it. So I'm here for it. I now, think Larry, some- this is, go ahead. 
I was going to say, I think at some point, Meth McClain's getting killed. I don't know if it's going to be this season or next, but I think at some point it's going to come out um, to Tariq that mm -hmm. that he's been playing both sides of the fence by taking money from Monet. And I think at some point he's going to get killed. Okay. Also in the trailer, this is the scene I'm talking about where she's she's back and I'm trying to hold on hope like hell. You know, keep hope alive, Larry, <laughs> that we're not going to lose this wonderful woman. But it looks like she's talking to Tariq. You see the earring. And, mm -hmm. this looks, and it's dark. So it looks like it's one of those blackout dreams that Tariq and his daddy used to have. Larry, is there any chance that this is real and I'm going to get the carry back? Nah, I don't think this is real. I think this is, I mean, it might be real, but it's probably just a flashback. Like Damn this it. is probably something that happened before. I don't think that, I don't think they're bringing her back. I mean, they might, this is what, this is going to be what, episode nine? Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. You know, I would not be at all surprised <laughs> if we see, if like when we see, um, when we see Carrie, the next time that they show her will be like on a gurney getting put into an ambulance or something, sort of leaving it hanging on whether or not she's alive or dead or she's going to make it or not. So that's the way I would play it. I wouldn't just, I wouldn't definitively leave her as just dead, you know, cause I actually like her character. I think she, I think her character has a lot of potential to keep on going story wise because she's obviously, she's a professor. She has the whole thing at Stansfield. She has a connection with Zeke. She's an attorney, a former prosecutor. I mean, she could do a lot with Zeke and his story. I mean, not with just Zeke, with uh, with Tate and his story. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like her. I like her character. I, and you know, I, I shouldn't say I like her character. I, if I was a writer, I would like her character because there's a lot of potential there in her character. I'm gonna let it go, Larry. I'm gonna let it go. <laughs> I'm just let it go. I hope I hope she's not dead though, man. I hope she's not dead. Next, <laughs> we got Jenny talking to what I think is Lauren. What could she possibly be saying to Lauren, my brother Larry? Man, she's probably trying to convince Lauren to testify. You know, mm. because mm. I mean. Tariq basically went up there and, you know, set up, she, he basically set up Professor Milgram and Professor Milgram just got eviscerated on the stand. I mean, Meth McClain just, he just took out a machete and just gutted her like, you know, like he was field dressing an animal or something, boy. He, he, whew, he, he just wore her all the way out. So I'm assuming that she's probably trying to salvage her, her case and convince, um, and convince Lauren to actually uh to actually testify the only thing i could think that might try and convince lauren of that is if she starts showing lauren all of the all of the damage that has been in the wake of Tariq, all the the dead bodies the you know the dad the you know the various just all the various people that have died in his in his orbit you know in his orbit and and try and convince her like if you if you leave him out of jail, if you let him keep running around and if you stay near him, this is likely mm -hmm. what's going to happen to you because this is what happens to everyone. So that's the only thing I can think that she might have to try and get her to testify because right now Lauren's not feeling it. Lauren feels like she's betrayed him. She's feeling guilty and and she still has love for him. Okay. And so, then, Larry, we have a big might, shootout scene. Huge oh, shootout say, scene. What's her name might be better off telling Lauren if she can find out that Tariq's sleeping with Diana and Effie. That might piss Lauren off more and make her want to testify because they say, you know, there's they talk about a woman scorned. If she finds out that that he's smashing two other chicks, Lauren might be like, oh, F this, and you know, <laughs> I'm testifying. Uh, so, Larry, I've got um, baby bruiser says off topic, Lamont, but what about the cell phone Yaz has in the bear? I think that that cell phone is just going to be continued to be used. And as Yaz gets with this new family, that's going to always be her way to connect back to Tariq. Yeah. That's what I think. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the man uh -oh. with the greatest voice on the YouTube streets is my brother, <laughs> Brandon Keith Avery. How you doing, brother? Pretty good, man. How y'all doing? I'm doing good, man. Was you able to send that link to on one tape? Because I cannot get into my IG account. Uh, the, the stream y'all link. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, I, I will. Uh, if you need me to, yeah, pl please do, please okay. do. So, so, B. Avery, now that we got you in here, and we're talking First, about your hair, B. I sure do. do. Sorry, I woke up. I just woke up from a nap. I thought there was good? something on my screen, and I tried to wipe my screen, and I was like, nope. <laughs> well, let me let me take care of that real quick. I, 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 I'll I okay. be right back. Do you say? Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. So I was going to tell Larry, you to send, uh, to send uh, you know, um, one take that, that link. Oh, I did. Yeah, that's, okay. that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. Okay. So, Larry, we've got a shootout scene coming in episode nine. You got Monet down here protecting her little baby, and you got Mecca, the daddy, taking a, a dead shot on somebody. What is going on here, Larry, at the basketball court? Man, I'll tell you. They, how do these how do these fools get around? How do they shoot up so many places and end up popping so many people and no one ever looks at them? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, they chameleons, Larry. They chameleons. They know how to blend in and blend out. It's going to be interesting to see Mecca put some work in, though, because right now, I mean, we've seen him, you know, we saw him, you know, cut Chef's neck. We saw him put over, take old boy offline, you know. That's, that, 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 was the funniest, that was the funniest line, I think, in all the powers right there. What he said, <laughs> he told Homegirl, don't worry, he'll be back online in a minute. <laughs> but when he, you know, he, we saw him take dude out or, Wait, no, the chef took him out, but we saw him, but we saw him take the chef out. But we haven't really seen him under real pressure. Every time he's sort of gotten into it, he's always been in full control. So it's going to be interesting to see how he performs under pressure. Well, I don't know how you put a man like him under pressure when he gave Kane that line of if you got to prepare for war, you're about to lose. Something, something along that. I'm paraphrasing, but it it was sweet. And so how did you catch this dude off guard? The only way you can catch him off guard, in my opinion right now, is through Monet. Monet would be the only way that he could make himself vulnerable because other than that, dude got defenses up, man. This dude, see, he see you coming, he see you going, he see you dying. So I think yeah. the, the key to his defeat would be this young lady right here, Nay Nay. Nay 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 <laughs> Nay Nay. <laughs> He does have a distinct advantage too, the fact that he's actually trained. You know, the rest of these fools right. are running around just shooting willy dollar nilly. And this they, dude, they dollar store gangsters, Larry. They dollar store yeah. gangsters, just whatever the hell may be. They just dollar store gangsters. Yeah, so. and this dude's actually trained. He knows, you know, he obviously he's. I mean, I believe he was special forces, so I mean, he obviously knows how to handle weapons. I'm sure he he can handle tactical breathing, so he's not going to be up there, you know, hyperventilating in the middle of a firefight and. You know, he seems like he seems like he would be a force to be reckoned with. Like I wouldn't no, want to have to have him on the other side of a of a gun from me. I wouldn't want anybody on the other side of a gun from me, but not somebody who's trained and and highly motivated. Mm -hmm. Highly motivated is the key. So, B. Avery, I'm gonna get you in here, man. We're just previewing what we think gonna happen um, this coming weekend. And there was some clips that spilled out. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let show it to you and let you get the first crack at what you think is going on. So this one is Effie. I've already made a video for this. You guys can go check it out. Um, I went nasty on Braden too. I said his daddy was dressed in blackface. So mm. take a look at this, um, B. Avery. I can break my word, protect everything I've ever known, or I can keep my word, protect myself become the person I never thought I'd become. Look, you found the game, okay? The game ain't find you. See, where Ooh. I'm from, that shit comes straight to your front door, but you made a choice. Way back at Showing again here. It's too late, Brayden. Can't come back now. You don't know what I have to do. Mm. Mm. You be Avery. Flow is your... <laughs> Brayden tripping. Brayden trying to get his long, dramatic monologue, like he just really going through it. Thank and you. It, it, it just sounds crazy, you know. Effie was a hundred percent right, bro. Come on, 100%. man, you chose this life. 100%. You know, 100%. I, I don't care what you got to do, Brayden. It don't matter. You still chose the life. You know, I don't. I don't want to hear that mess, man. Uh, you you way out of pocket with this one right here. It's hilarious. You know, the more the the, the more you think about it, man, just the the audacity, you know. <laughs> 
Some people, I mean, I I, I know this the show is just a show. It's entertaining, but still, the reality to it of, um, you know, how he compares his life to others. It's it's, it's just no equation. Um, so mm-hmm. he he's silly. He he's silly. He need to go sit down somewhere. Um, <laughs> wow, it's just, it's Larry, kind of, just no know. empathy for sympathy for anybody, Brandon. My no, goodness, not, not him. <laughs> Yeah. And not in that situation either. I didn't have no sympathy for his ass either. I'm just, I'm straight serious. Bro, give up. And this is what I said on my video. I said, Brayden, give up the Snyder cut of your daddy in blackface. Just give it up. Because that's what they're talking about. So, yeah. Uh, Larry, what'd you, th- what'd you think? It's just, you know, it's funny because, I mean, you can look at this from so many different levels. It's just, I mean, on one end, it's just sort of ridiculous that he's up there running around with Kane, robbing, robbing jewelry stores, blasting people, you know, when he's, you know, when they're robbing these drug dealers, digging up dead bodies and all this craziness that he's just having a good time doing, you know, and now he's up there all twisted up inside about giving up a picture of his dad in blackface. And I get it. It's your pops. It's your family. You don't want to betray your family. But the reality of it is, when you look at the people that they are, mm-hmm. they all have done it. I mean, what? They're what his friends and family. Everyone's gonna everyone's gonna know that he did it. They already know that he did it. They were there. It was like, I mean, the people that this guy that his dad that his dad runs with his circle of people. They don't care about if I mean they don't want their own stuff getting out. But the fact that it got out doesn't mean they're gonna stop working with them. I mean, let's not forget his dad, I think, runs a hedge fund or something. The dude's an earner. And it's about money. They don't care if you they don't care if you got caught on blackface. All they're gonna do is say, you know what? We can't show, we can't have you come to a couple of parties. Just stay home for a few months. You'll be back. You know, once everything dies down, you'll be back. It'll be all good. And that's mm-hmm. what it'll be. If it even gets to that, you know. Well, at the end of the day, talking about betraying the family. He's already betrayed the family by being involved with Tariq and doing what he's doing in the drug game, robbing store. That's betrayal to the family. You think they want that to get out? That's a that's a straight betrayal. Yeah. And he's making a decision that he wants to be in the game, and he needed a good good little taste of that effie in his mouth to let her let him know, hey, bro, you chose this game, and as yeah. long as I'm riding with Tariq, you think you're gonna ride with him? You're gonna do what he need to do. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. Could either one of you guys see him dying? Yes. What? I don't, I don't want to my Braden. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Nah. I don't want him. To, I don't want him to die at all. But I, I can see him dying. Yeah. Me too. No, nah, I don't see him dying because I, I really, I really believe. Oh, he just dipped out on us. I don't <laughs> think Braden's dying. <laughs> I don't think Braden's dying because I think Braden really is going to be uh, Tariq's Tommy. I think he's going to be Tariq's Tommy. I think at some point. I think at some point, Braid, something's going to happen with Braden where he's going to probably – he's going to experience something really, really heinous. Like, I don't know if he's going to get – if someone's going to kidnap him or grab him up and beat him and, and, and torture him, and he's going to have to go just straight ham and start blasting fools. But something's going to happen to him that's going to flick that switch where he's no longer going to be just the, the, the easygoing, free-loving dude who's just having fun in the game. At some point, he's going to really be – in the game and because as it is right now he's having fun he's a tourist still he's doing he's putting in a little bit of work but he's still a tourist because if he wants to dip out all he has to do is just decide he wants to deuces i'm gone i'm out maybe but kane I, kills his brother or or his dad gets caught in the crossfire that something yeah. like that something, something like, like that. that could happen i i personally i don't think that if he if they killed his his father or his brother, it would garner much sympathy from the audience because his, we have already met his brother. His brother's a complete douchebag. His dad, no one's going to be, I mean, a prim- primarily black audience is not going to care if his dad, some dude that's hanging, that's uh, sitting up there with, in blackface gets killed. The person who I think would really be affected is if his sister got killed. I think okay. then, yeah. I think Dan Kane would, I mean, um, Braden would go straight ham at that point and people would understand why. Look at Tristan C's comment. You're right. I could see his yeah. sister overdosing. Yeah, that's a good one. Way to go, Tristan C. 
Yeah. I'm going to get us off this subject with this. So they dropped clips of them already filming season three. Take a look at this if you want to know who's not going to die. Up here, right here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah. What's up? What's up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lorenzo, you live. Kane, you live. Drew, you live. Mary, you live. Um, Diana, you survived. Got two words for all this. What's that? I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see Diana in there, but I guess she's in there somewhere. Oh, there, there she, she is. is. Wear a mask okay. on. That's it. What you got, B.A.? Uh, a smoke and mirrors. Um, <laughs> do we really know <laughs> that that is the set for season three? Is can that be confirmed? Are that you that saying that? Are you saying that Fifty Cent is lying the way Courtney Kemp has twisted truths before? Oh yes, sir. I possibly <laughs> am. It is possible that he is a liar. That he is Pinocchio, yo yo. I mean, that could be <laughs> Pinocchio one Black. B that could be a season one or season two B-roll. Uh, even if it is season three, hey, come out, hang out on the set. Let's trick the people a little bit and make them think that. I mean, they're smarter than that. They uh, Because they was leaking. Uh, remember in season one of the original show, they was leaking out that Tasha was the one to kill Ghost. And we know how that turned right. out. So, I mean. But, me, but, but see, me, you, me and you never believed that. I remember talking to you about that. And oh, we yeah. didn't buy that. We didn't buy that at all. I kind of yeah. am buying this one, B. Kind of. Can we? Uh, possible, but can we get a billions crossover and get Chuck Rose to come in and prosecute? <laughs> that would be dope. Has the, has the new season of that started yet? It has. They had the first two episodes already. Oh my god! Okay. There you go. That's <laughs> the shining of Cain. <laughs> I and tell you what, said, though, Kane, Kane needs to seriously consider taking out Mecca. He needs to find out who's Mecca Connect is. I think, I mean, I think I think Mecca's just bringing it in direct, but he might need to kill Mecca because he's not safe working for that dude. Yes, I agree. I, I've already mentioned that, Larry, because um, shoot, let me see if I got it. I and he it? may, he may, I mean, especially now that he's set up so that they can get robbed. I mean, he's just, I mean, you never know at what point. That Mecca's gonna figure that out. And let, let me and when, let me give y'all some die. more. Let me give you some more supporting detail as to why I mentioned that Kane might take out Zeke or Mecca. And this is why. I'll show you this real quick, then we'll move on. Come home, Kane. I can't right now. I don't have time for your shit. I can't come home. I gotta go, Poppy. I'll talk to you later. Boy, now that, now that was the walk and the look of a man who's defeated right in front of that twin finger hut shop be bed. That was a defeated <laughs> man. That was the look of a man who's like, no, this N-word didn't. I don't have my product. My wife done. I done found out she done had a kid for 24, 23 years. Mm. Kids done split. And my main son, who's my connect, ain't trying to come and be with a daddy. Now, he don't know. That Mecca's behind him saying, uh-uh, you ain't getting no more of this product. Nope. So they still haven't Mary, explained how they still haven't explained how you have an eight-year-old in kindergarten. I mean, you <laughs> you lie, obviously. I mean, come on. I mean, I know some kids are big, but damn. No, I was There's a say, big I'll... difference between a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. Just in size-wise, maturity-wise, you know, their 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 speech capabilities, everything. It would it would also be interesting if Kane tried to kill Mecca but failed, and mm. then you know uh, mm. Mecca's gonna have a, a, a you know a hit on him. You know he escapes somehow because I don't. I mean it, I mean if he kills him that'll be fine. But at the same time that'll be this kind of the same way that Ghost killed um, old dude in the elevator at the end of his final season. Jason, uh, the way he killed Jason. I don't mm, want a right. repeat of that. And it feels like if he, that'll kind of be a repeat in a way. But if he tries to kill him and fails, that'll be an interesting wrench that they throw into the plot, I think. You I'm, know, I'm as okay of right with... now, when you look at what we just saw, 
Kane is going to be torn one way or the other one. One way or the other one. Because, you know, his daddy's going to want to know what the hell you're doing. Mecca's pulling the strings right now. What happens when Mecca no longer needs Kane? Yeah, then he's done. Yeah. yeah. Well, but will the daddy be willing to let Kane come back into the family? Depends on what he can offer. <laughs> mm, damn. Transaction. I mean, that's really what it is. Off. I mean, it depends on what he can offer. If he, you know, if if he has something real, if he has if he can come with a new connector or something, you know. Oh, Tressa C makes a great point. And I remember I remember them talking about this. After Katrina, kids had lost their birth certificates and things of that nature. So a lot of kids were just making up their ages and stuff. There was a story they had done about some AAU basketball players in that area that was running around talking about their asses were 16. Damn it, these boys was damn near 20 hmm. in AAU. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, how in the world you let them pull that off? And, you know, the excuse was we lost all our stuff. We don't have a record of it. And eventually, when you know things got back to normal, that's when they was able to catch up with some of those people. So, mm. yeah, man. All right, folks, it's going to be a good weekend. Be sure to subscribe to everybody's channel you see on this page. And let me tell you what I got coming this week. So, as of Tuesday at noon, me and your boy Mark Dart, we going head to head live. Be there February first at noon, and then on Wednesday night. I got a group that y'all love, another power couple. Random TV Reviews is joining me for an interview, and then we're going to recap the events that happened in Episode 9. That's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. And then the big interview is Thursday night. I've got Janelle, Crystal Lee Brown. She was Janelle <laughs> on Hightown, Cito's boo thing. She's going to be interviewing with me Thursday night at 9 p.m. She's going to tell me what's going to happen in Season 3. She's going to tell me why she had a man of this stature in a twin bed. And she's going to also <laughs> tell me if she gave back that expedition. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, please like this video. Check my boys out. From there, we're <laughs> moving on to Peacemaker. Well, go, go back to that picture for a minute. Why does he? Why does his face look just like, uh, what's her name, from, Peace, from Peace, uh, Peacemaker, out of bio? Out of at a bayou. Why does he didn't look like his face? That, that she does that same expression. She, he looks just like out of bio right there. Man, maybe it's a Hollywood thing that they ain't telling us about. I don't, I don't know. know. They might be secretly related or something. Because in this picture right here, out of bio ain't making that kind of face. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. Not right there. <laughs> so before we get into that, my people, let me preview a little bit. This was the part of um Peacemaker. That caught my attention along with one other part, but I'll let you guys see this one first. Fuck. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. BA, the mm -mm. floor is yours. Give me your thoughts and opinions on Peacemaker this past episode and what you like, what you didn't like. Um what I liked, well, no, I, I mean, I'll just start what I didn't like. To be honest, I mean, okay. what I've loved about the show so far <laughs> is the comedy and how bold it is, or just how they don't care and they're just we're gonna say whatever we want to say and do what we want to do. But I gotta be honest, this episode, the comedy was starting to get on my nerve a little bit. Thank um, you. Between Peacemaker really? and uh, Vigilante, at the very Thank beginning you. of this episode, when he was like, "But why did you frame my father? You could have framed Bill Cosby and and Optimus Prime and." And Christina Ricci, and he just started going down all these names. And I'm just like, damn, man, shut up. This is not funny. I felt like Murray, and he was like, Peacemaker, will you sh please shut the fuck up? You know, uh, <laughs> uh, my, my, it, you know, I, I, I'm, I only use the F bomb because they use it in the show. So I, thought uh, I mean, was, yeah. be able, this is a free channel. You can say, you can say anything you want, as long as it doesn't involve those type of adjectives and conjunctions dealing with children. But other than gotcha, that, gotcha, say whatever gotcha, you want to say. Gotcha. You can feel free when you gotcha, hang with me. Gotcha. Yeah, but I was, I was, uh, I was with, I was down uh, with Myrn this whole time. Just like y'all, shut the hell up. Like the jokes was just a bit too much, you know. Um, I, I, I was annoyed. Now, when they went into the warehouse and they was fighting all the the butterflies and stuff and the bomb, you know, that was cool. I was kind of laughing when. 
Autobio, every time uh, Peacemaker Chris kills somebody, Autobio will come and shoot him right afterwards. He, he, he's like, you don't have to shoot him. When I, she's like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So that, that was cool right there. Um, <laughs> but the, the comedy, man, that was just, you know, I, I, they just needed to tone it down just a little bit to me. Um, but other than that, it was a cool episode. I, 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 I co-signed everything you said, B.A. Some of what I was saying I was going to say is what you said, but I told you from day one, this, that sentiment has been my sentiment about the comedy in this thing. It's kind of watching John Cena just reminded me of slapstick comedy. Um, and, you know, that is a coded a coded language for something I'm not going to say, but it was slapstick comedy. And John Cena was just getting on my last damn nerves with it. Um, and it just finally just bubbled over this episode. So that apology that I gave one take last week. I'm going to take that shit all the way back right now because John Cena just, he ruined it for mm. me this episode. Mm. Yeah, man. But go ahead, Larry. It's funny that you guys said that because that was one of my favorite scenes, man. Oh, no. <laughs> ew, ew, ew. He just yeah. kept going and going and going with all kinds of different names. And then they had the post credit scene where he was doing, but he was even giving more names. And I, <laughs> I, was, I was in stitches watching that scene. I thought it was hilarious. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I like the ridiculous, over-the-top comedy with this because the idea, I mean, John Cena in, in his in his whole look, he's so freakishly huge. I mean, he's almost he's almost comical just looking at him. He's so large of a human being that it's just that to add all of that in there. All that extra over the top comedy just makes it funny for me because otherwise, I think if he try and if he tries to be serious and act too, you know, and try and be too much of a serious actor, I think for one, he probably just doesn't have the acting chops just yet. And I think that what he's doing right now just works for him. Um, there was some stuff in here that I really liked. I love the way that how they just instantly switched over with Econos. When he came in there and chainsawed that dude, it was like all of a sudden it was like Peacemaker had respect for him. He was like, he stopped calling him, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, what's your name told him, to, you know, out of bio said stop calling him Die Beard. But it was like, forget that. It was like he immediately started calling him, uh, you know, Economos, Economos. And, and then he was like, you could tell it was just sort of like, this dude's legit. He came through in the clutch, you know. And he did. He did diss his boy, which I thought was kind of messed up when when uh, when uh, Vigilante was like, "That was my thing. I just said it 15 minutes ago." And then here he comes doing it. You know, he was like, "It would have been way cooler if he would have gave me the chainsaw." And then I did it. And he was like, "I forgot what he called him. His nickname for his for his dick. He called him something." He was like, "Nah, stop being a whatever." And you know, <laughs> I don't know, man. Um... I liked it. That's cool. That's cool. It, it's like the way this episode started with um, Chris waking up intoxicated, you know, it seemed right, like he really got a um, a sense of reality finally. And mm -hmm. he was going to, you know, calm down. But then he's talking about finger banging with Adebayo <laughs> talking right. about, oh, I, and she made she made a good point. So she was like, so you thought women's fingers fall off doing sex? You know, it was just like, man, I, I don't know. I just thought we was kind of past that, you know. I, I'm right, not saying that he could right. completely just abandoned his humor, but it, it's kind of like he didn't, he hasn't learned anything yet or something. I, I don't know. It, it just... Like you, inst instead of him evolving, you seem like he was regressing. And yeah, it, yeah. It, see, that's I, why I, I like did, it though, because he's not like evolving. That that's who moment. he is. That's just who he is. It's not a matter of him trying to grow into be some better person. He's exactly who we see him as, and that's part of the reason why, like like Mern said, that's why we need them. We need these types of dudes right now, right here. And I, I'll tell you the yeah. thing that I really liked about this episode. One thing I really liked was when um was when uh Harcourt she let her she she let her her guard down. You know, normally she's so she has this big wall up, she's all serious, and she put her wall down. She took her phone out and took that nice photo of the crew and then sent mm -hmm. it out to everyone at the end. It was almost like saying, you know, cause she's always talked about, it. she never really had a family or friends or what it was like. Her dad taught her to be like a serious killer and everything, but she's never really been 
like part of a crew like that. And now if it's not, not only is she showing that everybody like you're my crew, but she's letting everybody else know we are a unit. We are a crew. And if you notice the cool thing about that was, is Mern wasn't in that photo. And that was important because we know Mern is a butterfly. Good now, point. Do I, didn't, you think, I didn't even notice that. Do you think that that picture is going to be used for some kind of nefarious purpose in the future? I got a feeling it is. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that like in a DC, like in another Suicide Squad movie, with you know it shows up on somebody's screen or something, or Waller mm -hmm. uses it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the only two parts that I liked was the warehouse scene, and at the end when Out of Bayou had on a peacemaker's helmet and she could see x-ray and saw that Myrn was a butterfly. And I'll go back to the warehouse. For a minute there, B. Avery, I thought that was Gorilla Grodd. I was I was starting to come out of my chair thinking, oh my God, they got Gorilla Grodd up in this thing until he got hacksaw Jim Duggan right through the gut. And I was like, there's no way they would let that be Gorilla Grodd. Because I could easily <laughs> see him using his mind control to control these butterflies. Because we already know based on some things that we've seen, there's probably some good butterflies and some bad butterflies, and we just don't know how it's being controlled. So I thought that he was using his mind control to control the um, butterfly, but it's not him because they killed him. And then we do get to the very end, and I'm sitting here thinking, out of buy you. You can't run faster than that. You can't get out that door a, a step faster and then swing around and shoot him with your gun. You couldn't do that. <laughs> And he caught her, and I was like, "Man, yeah. what is what is he going to do to her?" So, B.A., what's he about to do to? Her? I don't. He's not killing her. So, what is he going to do with her? He's going to make her a butterfly. Um, I think he's just going to reveal the truth. Uh oh. And it's going to be some exposition, and Ooh. she's going to have to make a decision. Because you may mm -hmm. be right; there may be good butterflies and bad, bad butterflies. Mm -hmm. You know, he may be a good butterfly. But uh, you made me think about something. Well, first, let me let me go back real quick. Uh, yeah, good point, Larry, about the uh, hardcore in the photo. I did say that. That was a nice mm -hmm. little trend, growth for her character because, right. as you said, she was in the bar by herself, and then she sent the photo out to everybody, and when she was getting the responses, she was smiling. And that's great right. because, you know, with the emoji, and then, you know, uh, Vigilante sent the mermaid um, uh, emoji. And that was like, he was like, yeah, it means, every, like, I think Chris was like, yeah, it, it means every emoji from happy all the way to sad. And Adebayo was like, well, what's the point of the emoji then if it's every emotion? So that was kind of funny. Uh, yeah, right. But Hardcore has always been by herself alone. Or we, when we first saw her in episodes one and two, she was at the bar by herself. Old dude tried to shoot a shot. She was like, yeah, do you know how to solve fish breath disease or something like that? <laughs> and then he like at her. And, and then like later on in the season when she was by herself, it may have been episode four, a peacemaker uh approached her and she was like, dude, this is this is uh, off, we um th this is out of office hours. I don't want to talk to you. You right. know what I'm saying? I want right. to be by myself. And he walked yeah. away talking about her tits and all that. Um, talking about it's not a sexual nice. trying to give you a genuine compliment. But now she's in the bar and she's like, Man, I miss these guys. I want to send a picture and you know, reminisce on the good day that we had today. I just think that's kind of uh, dope right there. So um, yeah. now going to the gorilla thing, I like you. I thought that was Gorilla Grodd at first, you know, initially. But I was like, wait a minute, that can't be Gorilla Grodd. But two, I'm, I'm disappointed because they kind of foreshadowed that in season one or two with that news clip on the, the, the news. They was talking about the big gorilla in the background. And so mm -hmm. we was waiting for that to come back. But as soon as he comes back, he's, he, they kill him as soon as we should. They we, kill we, him. We him. So I'm, right. like, what? I'm mm -hmm. like, come on. Why, why? What, what was, was the, the point? point? You know? Yeah. And then uh, yeah. every, everybody should have died. Not only is this is a gorilla, this is a super gorilla. One, super strong. One swipe, one back fist. Not only are they dead, their body part is dismembered or, or whatever. You know? <laughs> right. I mean, he like, hitting them so B, he hitting them so hard, he's slapping the skin off their body. Bruh, pow! Yeah, man. But, I mean, he he had uh he had a peacemaker like this and was about to smash them down, but he was like, no. And then he came back in and said, die, human. I'm like. He, he should have killed them. So that execution, th this is just more reasons why this wasn't my favorite episode. It, it wasn't trash, but it was just these moments. So I was like, okay, you know. See, so. see, B, you agree with me. Exactly. Yeah. Exa but see, you know, I haven't never been really and fully, well, okay, I was on the John Cena bandwagon last week. I was. <laughs> because cause I saw the character moving in a good direction. I'm off that bandwagon now. One take, I'm off. You had me. 
Back then, you didn't want me. Now I'm hot. You're all on me. But when I'm off, I'm off of them because this episode just did it in for me. And mm. how y'all feeling about Vigilante? Are y'all liking his character? Um, I still like Vigilante. I like hardcore. I like everybody. It's just John Cena is missing it with me, uh, especially this coming back episode. So be like, who's your favorite character to this point? Mern, still by far. I love Mern. Yeah. Even if him being a butterfly, he's just funny. Uh, but Vigilante, I mean, just like he was just a bit annoying this episode, you know, like it, 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 going, I, I don't, I had to sound like a broken record, but it was the last episode or the episode before that where Autobio talked him into going into the prison and executing Chris's father, uh, the white dragon. When he came out in his regular clothes, when Hardcore picked him up, he was sad and had his head down and he was in his regular clothes and he got into the car. You know, the, the white dragon is still alive. You know, I feel bad. I feel like it's worse. And he was distraught. And so I'm, yeah. I'm thinking there, okay, like he's going to mature a little bit and learn. But then we, we in, in this current episode, he's still like talking about butt orifices and PowerPoint presentations and other stuff. I'm just like, why? You know, I don't know. I just, I don't want to go back to that. So he's, <laughs> I like Mern. Vigilante is annoying. <laughs> you know. Uh, so my, t my two, Larry, before I give it to you, I'm still on the Eagly train. I love Eagly. I love Peacemaker's Eagle. And I'm still down with the Vigilante. But Larry, who you got? Who are your two favorite? Uh, my Vigilante is definitely is definitely my uh my favorite so far. I, I just he's yeah, he's he's great. Yeah. I just he's I like dude. him. Whoever wrote his character for this is fantastic. They've just they did a really great job balancing him with uh with Peacemaker. And I, you know, I like Autobio's character too. Partly, I think because I just like her as an actor. You know, okay. I mean, her character is cool, but I just like her as an actor. I like her whole vibe. So, um, you know, we'll have to see how she plays out. But I like it's hard because I like Harcourt too. Like Harcourt's character is, I mean especially since we didn't really get to know much about her in the suicide squads. And now we're actually getting to know her a little bit. It's kind of cool to see her. I, I just want them to do like a whole episode just on her, you know, and, and no love for KKK daddy. Oh, hell no. I almost feel like with, I feel like what's his name? Uh, something Patrick. Um, I forgot his, I forgot the actor's real name. I feel like he needs to do a movie where he plays like a, underground railroad conductor or something <laughs> you know he, he, he needs to play something else i feel like he plays too many of those types of roles and and people can start he, believing it you he's know? got that look man he just has that look and um fellas i'll i'll get you out of here on this i want us to preview episode six make some predictions i got the trailer let's take a look so you soon where you boss i'm gonna do something i should have done a long time ago what's that Kill my son. Mm. Dude, you still have that thing? Yeah. What is Goff doing? What the fuck? Get the troops together. Let's go get Peacemaker. Quick summarization: The daddy's gonna get out. He's going looking for Peacemaker. He he done went and called a whole redneck clan. He's gonna put on his suit. He's gonna become the villain from the comics, which everybody's seen this kind. This ain't no surprise right here. But what is kind of surprising is Vigilante's taking a look at that butterfly, and the butterfly is actually communicating with Peacemaker. He put up a Peacemaker sign on. The glass, which tells me, like I was saying earlier, it's probably some good butterflies and some bad butterflies. They roll up to John C. I mean, excuse me, Peacemaker House, about to come kick in the door, wave in the 4-4. And then that police officer that Mern contacted is standing out here. And I can't tell if that's butterflies or if that's spaceships. What it look like to y'all, butterflies or spaceships? No, those look like butterflies, I think. Okay. Spaceships. Look like spaceships to me. You know, you remember when um uh Chris and Vigilante ran a train on the, the neighbor's wife? <laughs> yeah, and then he pulled man. out he, and I think he that pulled was out, more of a threesome, right? No, I hope not. 
Um, uh, I hope it was a train. Uh, he, he pulled out the little rock with the alien language, and then it it turned into like a little disc thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I think those are. Excuse me. Yeah, okay. it could be that. Okay. okay. All right, be able to give me give me the summarization of what you think is going to happen this coming episode. Look, well, this looks like going to be a better one. Huh? Oh yeah, it's it definitely like going to go movie. down with the white dragon suit. You know, we're going to see yes. uh, what all yes. that can do. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope we get some I nice fights. Uh, yep. You know, somebody's going to die. Um, what else? Uh, uh, yeah, those are spaceships. White dragons are going to f up some stuff. Um, the cops coming know. for Peacemaker. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm. A, uh, I think. Um, what is the name? Vigilante is going to voluntarily put that butterfly up his butt. Just oh he's no! Just oh he's no! Curious. He going to be like, I want to oh, know what's going to happen. Blue oh blue. no! <laughs> please, vigilante, don't listen to me, Avery. Please don't click that thing. Yeah, but, you know. It's friendly. This is a friendly one. Maybe the mm. friendly. Maybe he see Larry. What B. A. was saying is, in order for him to save them from the police, he might have to take. He might have to take one for the team. Trust that this is a peaceful. <sighs> Butterfly, and he's gonna put it up his butt, and he's gonna. Isn't, go though, he gonna... isn't that yes. the one that he captured from the uh, from the chick that he that he had sex with, and then sh and then shot her? Yeah, but I mean, that, apparently, that thing, well, that thing was trying to kill him. Apparently, this thing has decided to bond with him because he's been keeping it like a pet and feeding it, and so now it's mm -hmm. trying to communicate with him, Larry. Yeah, okay. they're gonna be like a little superhuman, super Zord. Yeah, or something, yeah. You know? So yeah. And he's kept eagerly from eating it. <laughs> right. Here's one thing I'm thinking is that I think that um, we're going to find out that that Mern's probably been a butterfly all along. And Waller knew that he was a butterfly and mm. and been work and she sent him there for that purpose to work with this. So they, they're working together. And I think we're also going to find out, too, that. Waller had, you know, had her daughter and her daughter's girlfriend both fired, you know, wow. because wow. when her when the when the girlfriend came back and she said, we could have never predicted that we would have both lost our jobs and you and I'm appreciative that you took this job so that, you know, temporarily so that we can get by. As soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, that sounds like Waller's hands all up in there. Like she needed her daughter because she needed someone that she could trust. And she wasn't going to take the job if she already had one. So the only way to get her to, to do it is to make sure she didn't have any other choice. Because if she just got, if, 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 if Autobio just lost her job and her girlfriend still has one, then she just would have kept, they just would have kept living like they were, maybe cut some corners to make it. And then she would look for a new job. So the only way to really guarantee that she would have had to have taken that job is to make sure both of them lost their job. So, I mean, We've seen what kind of what kind of strings Waller can pull already, so it doesn't it doesn't surprise me at all that she can get those two fired and and orchestrate her daughter coming to work for him. So, mm -hmm. but I I would not be surprised if we see um, if we see that butterfly enter vigilante or I doubt it would be in Peacemaker, but. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it go, if we see that butterfly go into Vigilante, because then it would be interesting to see Vigilante square off with uh, with uh, White Dragon. Because you know, at some point when a dad's coming for him, Vigilante's going to be right there to fight him. And, you know, and the dad's going to want to pee. He's going to want to, he's going to want to get at him because he basically he beat up all of his dudes and called him out in front of everyone. And he wanted to do it, but he was like, I'm smarter than that. I'm not going to do that right here in front of everybody and get myself locked up even longer. So, you know, he, when he gets that, now that he's out, he's going to want some of that. So mm -hmm. it would be interesting to see Vigilante just, I mean, because the dude's already crazy and he's talented, but he's just a normal human being. So now if he's got butterfly strength, he might really be able to give the white dragon a run for his money. Michelle wanted me to let you know, this was the butterfly that came out of the Senator. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and, and for all we know, the senator could be good. Senator could be against Mern. And then she also mm -hmm. mentioned how in the comics, um, White Dragon worked for Waller because, you know, Waller tends to go after these criminals and put them to work on her behalf. And mm -hmm. there's been times in the comics where Waller has had to put criminals to work on the behalf of Lex Luthor 
had them thinking they was doing things on the up and up when they really was trying to undermine Superman. Because Waller mm. don't really care for Superman in the comics either. So, hey, man, um, I'm, I'm here for next week. Next week, like, it's going to be really, really good. Continue to post your comments, fellas. Um, I mean, la ladies and gentlemen, any last words you guys want to say? So be able to let the people know what's going on on your channel this week, and um, we'll get out of here. Um, This week or uh, weekend, um, I'm going to have my Euphoria Season 2, Episode 4 drops Sunday at 9. Uh, mm -hmm. Sunday is 6.30. I have the Movie News Roundup show. Um Got a you know about six seven eight topics that we'll that I will be talking about, uh, or I'll be talking about, and uh, this yeah the, the, you know it's been the movie s releases have been very slow in 2022 mm -hmm. so far, but now we are in February and it's picking back up, and so uh, I'm gonna be having a lot of reviews for you guys this week. Um, they got Jackass Forever coming out. <laughs> uh, there's some other stuff too. I'm thinking I'm, I'm seeing that on Tuesday. Uh, I'm seeing stuff Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week. And so, just uh, Damn. my shows, Euphoria, and a lot of movie reviews are coming. So, just make sure you wow. subscribe for all that. Yep, his link is in video description, also on my related channels tab on my YouTube page. Larry, what's going on on your channel this week? Oh man, same old madness, more of reviews. I have some tutorials coming out. I've had some people ask me about VPNs. So I've done a few videos on how to install VPNs on your routers. Um, Rode was nice enough to send me a new microphone and a whole bunch of accessories oh. with it. So, okay, um, Rode. so yeah, I'm looking forward to that, to testing that out. Um, I'll probably just be sticking close to home this weekend because we're supposed to get that, uh, we're supposed to get that, what do they call it? A, a, a winter a winter cyclone snow bomb or some crazy name that they're calling it that is supposed to it's supposed to blast all kinds of of snow and horrible weather freezing temperatures and everything across this whole eastern seaboard so um i'm getting it i'll too, likely man. be sticking close to home this weekend but yeah um same old madness different day and you know if you guys are around come check my channel out <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, I pretty much told you what's going on with me. For those wondering, the plan is to go live, uh, me and the wife, to recap power around 3 p.m. on Sunday. That's the plan. Then we'll go live again at 9 p.m. Eastern on Monday. Then Tuesday live to recap power one more time. And then after that, that's when we'll start having um, guests coming through. Guests on two Wednesday, guests on Thursday, and noon, me and Mark Dark. Stay tuned. Hopefully we'll be able to do that live if we can get everything lined up and the snow don't mess us up too bad. Until that next sex is hell video, we out.